Good evening. My name is Dan Smith. I'm from Chippewa, New Mexico. And uh, my introduction is with my client is Kizla Chini Shlom. Ashini Bashi Chini Tatani Dutch Che. Tatni Zanet Dutch Chanel. I hail from Chippewa, New Mexico. I've got three other candidates with me from there. Um, I'm a father. I've been a retired firefighter for 20 years. I'm an artist. And yes, I was at the fire at Saudi we were helping put together a lot of good packages for the people. But the reason why I'm running, and the reason why, is because I'm tired of this government. Our own government is not listening to us anymore. They don't care about the things that go inside our home. Our electric bill, our food bill, our gas bill. All these things are rising. And nothing that they're doing is bringing down the cost of our living. We're suffering. A lot of our people are living from paycheck to paycheck. This isn't right for a nation that is rich in its resources. We're not getting anything in return. Our motto is let's rescue this nation. It needs rescuing. We need to go to work. We need to put all these good values and principles back to work. I'm concerned about the home and our children and our next generation. I'm here for the next generation, and I'm going to fight for them. That's why I win and I want to run. I want to run to represent you. It's a lot of hard work, but I'm used to it. I know what it takes, and I know I can do it. So I appreciate your vote for the nomination president. We've got a lot of work to do, and there's a lot of talk, but we need some good people to get this job done. So let's rescue our nomination. Let's get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, um, how would you address the differences between traditional and modern Navajo? Traditional and what? Modern Navajo. Traditional and modern Navajo. I would say you do, you do what works. I think the traditional ways complement the modern ways. I think it has to do with the home. What we teach our children at home is very important. What we do inside our home projects how we live and how we want our children to grow up. These things, when we give that responsibility away to the tribe or to our education system, I think that's where we go wrong. Because the, the traditional teachings, the text and the result, needs to stay inside the home. Because it's really, it's hard when you have people who don't know you or your family or your children trying to teach you what you should know. The home is where it all starts from. That should be the most sacred, protected thing that we should have. We have, we have fought hard to keep the home together. We have all these things like the legalization of alcohol, gambling, all those kind of things break up our homes. So there is a balance, but we do have to focus on what is right. There are great traditional teachings that we have to learn from. Those things are the core. Those things give us the ability to be strong. Those things give us the ability to ward off what is bad for us. They give us good judgment and they help us sustain our family. Those kind of things, I believe that's, that's how we would handle it, is focus on the family, keep the government out of our homes, and let us make that decision. So let's government, you know, with that, that said, that, that's how we strengthen the family. Thank you. Good evening. do with sovereignty. It appears that every time you pick up an Oho time, you would read a certain section of the uh, our sovereignty has been waved again over and over. And you wonder how many more ways are we going to go through this uh, this election to Lodge and Shiki under this uh, leadership called about the sovereignty he has added uh, 
of course, so our protection through that uh, particular element, that, that's what I'm questioning. If you were to be elected to be a president, how strongly and how vigorously are you going to protect uh, such waivers that uh, that should uh, not be entered into any kind of contracts or so forth? If people really want to come onto the reservation and do work or whatnot, well, then they should do it at free will without having to, not one nation having to waive the sovereignty. <coughs> sovereignty. Sovereignty means that you can take care of it yourself. That's, that's the most important thing, is that with all the issues like the water and the land and everything, we have to let the government, the federal government know that we are in control of that. Those things are guaranteed to us in the Treaty of 1868, even before that. So we have to stand strong with those ideas, those principles that we call sovereignty. To me, sovereignty can be summed up in some words like, we got this. And I'm a fireman. And everything that we do is dependent upon, on, on our ability to think and do it for ourselves. We can, we can do it in that, in that fashion. Because when we get in trouble, with the water, with the pollution, with all these things. Where's the first thing place we look? We look elsewhere. We have to have the ability to do it ourselves and understand that. And that makes us more powerful. Because if you understand that, that you can handle it yourself and not just cry every time something goes wrong that you have to have the big brother to come in and figure things out for you. We need to get to a position to where even the food, the water, the land, when things go wrong, we have to depend on them. We have to let the world, we have to assure the world that we can handle it ourselves. Just like the disaster in the side lake, the fire. Everybody came together. It wasn't the government, it was us. The people came together. And that's what government is about. They're afraid when the people have a voice to speak. When we can do it ourselves, they want us under their thumb. We need our freedom back. We need our voice back. That's what sovereignty is, the right to speak to your government and tell them how it is. That's what sovereignty is. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. And thank you. I founded a political party called the Now the Corn Party. And we're the party of the new generation. And what we want to do is we want to support all these new generation candidates that are running for council seats because we need we need them to work together with the president. If they don't, this is all they're doing in Winter Rock these days, and you're not getting the services that you need. That's the truth. We're not getting the services that they take our money every year. Your quality of life, everything at your home. You're, tonight you're going to go back home, you're going to look at how much money you spent on gas, food, butane to heat your home, electricity, fuel in your, in your vehicle to get to work. Is your government concerned about those things at your home? I don't think so. The prices are keeping, they're, they're keeping life, they're rising. It's hard on the pocketbook. Our, our Navajo families are living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. That's not right. That is not right. And they're not listening to our voice. And they're robbing us, robbing us of our resources. We need a new generation with new thinking to get the job done. We're ready to go to work. You guys said you guys are going to go to work and you're going to take the lead. Well, we're here. So give us that chance. Let us show you that we can do it. We're ready for it. So let's get ready to do it. Thank you. Yeah.